this is the key stage four life skills lesson. So the work that we've been doing in our work packs at home and for those of you who've been in school the last couple of weeks has been looking at the skills that you have that will lead on to your future career. So doing a career self-assessment, where are you now and where do you need to be based on what you want to do? If you've been at the edge a while, you'll know that we use the eight essential skills from the Skills Builder program to talk about um, how to assess ourselves and the skills are listening, speaking, problem solving, creativity, staying positive, aiming high, leadership and teamwork. For this lesson, we'll just be focusing on our listening skills, um, but we, we will move on to look at the others later on throughout the scheme of work. So hopefully you use your listening skills all the time. I want you to think and listening, we don't just mean hearing the sounds and making sense of the sounds, but we're also talking about showing that we're listening. So the use of eye contact and body language. And I want you to think carefully, why is eye contact important and how does it show that you're listening? What does positive body language look like? And what is the effect of positive body language? So I'd like you to imagine someone who's giving good eye contact and using positive body language. What does that look like for the person that they're talking to? How does that feel? And then I want you to imagine someone who's not giving good eye contact and not showing positive body language. Again, what does that look like? How does that feel? So if you've got a minute now, you can write that in your exercise book for me. So eye contact is important because it shows that you're listening. It shows that you're not distracted. It's useful for the for the other person in a conversation to be able to see someone's face and their expressions to get information about how they feel and we've talked about doing these lessons online it's quite hard for us as teachers because we can't see the responses that we're getting back from you or the responses at least aren't immediate positive body language um, means looking at this person who's speaking not fidgeting having your arms open not crossed against your chest and leaning forwards leaning towards them if you're sat back in your chair if your arms are folded if you're heads looking away you're you don't it doesn't appear that you, you may be listening but it doesn't appear that you're listening and if you're demonstrating positive body language it shows that you're interested it shows that you want to hear what the person's saying so if you were thinking about going for an interview or talking to a prospective college we would hope that you could demonstrate good eye contact and positive body language because although as i said you may be listening you need to show them that you are listening So I'm going to do a very quick video about questioning and then we're going to do some um, exam work through some examples together. Listening step seven. I show that I am listening by using open questions to deepen my understanding. Part one. The difference between closed and open questions. An important part of asking good questions is to know the right type of question to ask at the right time. There are two big types of questions. Closed questions are those which can be answered with a yes or no response. For example, is that or did they are useful for confirming or denying facts. However, they are not good at expanding conversations further. Open questions are those that cannot be answered with a yes or no response. For example, they tend to start with the bigger question words like who, what, why, when, and how. Sometimes these questions can still be answered with short factual answers, but they have the potential to be much broader So we're looking at the difference between open questions and closed questions. Underneath you've got two red boxes, one says open questions, one says closed questions, and you've got to match them up. So a detailed response is often needed. Is that an open question or a closed question? And a one word answer, such as yes or no, is that an open question or a closed question? I'll give you a minute to try and sort those. So hopefully you knew that an open question is one where a detailed response is needed and a closed question could be answered with one word such as yes or no. 
So let's have a go at some examples then. Did you finish your plan? Did you finish planning your presentation? Is that open or closed? If you could just answer yes, that's a closed question, isn't it? Why are you feeling that like that right now? Open or closed? Well, can't really answer it with a yes or no. We'd have to explain why. So that's an open question. Is that the train you got here? Again, work through the example. Think, can I give it a yes, no answer? So it's a closed question. How did that happen? That's an open question. So we're going to listen to a sound clip. You're going to write in your exercise book the questions that you hear. You don't have to write them out in full, but write them down in note form so you can understand what they are. I want you to think then, are they open or closed? And you can mark them O and C. Open and closed. So sound clip one, write down the questions and decide are they open or closed. Hi Hannah, how are you? I'm good thanks Dan. How was your weekend? It was great. I went to the cinema with some friends and then out for lunch at a new restaurant in town. How was the food? Really nice thanks. Lots of different dishes. Did they have options for vegetarians? Yes they did. OK, so hopefully you've got a list of questions there and you've sorted them into open and close. We're going to have another go now with sound clip two. Thank you for joining us today. Are you OK? Yes, thank you. Would you like a glass of water? No, thanks. OK. Could you tell me what you already know about our organisation? Of course. Um, as an organisation, I know you help businesses find solutions to their problems. Yes, that's right. What experience do you have of finding solutions to difficult problems? In my previous job, I managed a project with a large team. At times there were disagreements and I had to find ways to solve them. So you can write down the questions and mark whether they were open or closed. If you need to pause, you can, and we'll come back as we work through the answers. So the first sound clip, how are you? Is that open or closed? I would say it's an open question because you can't answer with a yes or no. How was your weekend? Also an open question. It invites the person to talk about it a bit more. How was the food? Again, open question. Gives an opportunity for the speaker to expand on their answer. And did they have options for vegetarians? Again, they could expand on it, but actually it gives the choice of just saying, yes, they did have options for vegetarians. So that could be classed as a closed question. Sound clip two. Are you OK? Yes, thank you. A better way to ask that if you wanted to ask an open question is how are you? But are you OK? Invites a yes, no answer. So it's a closed question. Would you like a glass of water? Hopefully you recognise that was closed. Could you tell me what you already know about our organisation? That's a very open question although the person in theory could say no <laughs> I can't tell you but it's inviting the person to talk about what they know about the organization what experience do you have of finding solutions to difficult problems again asking for someone to give a detailed answer so that is an open question so what is the difference between an open and a closed question hopefully now you can tell me can you give any examples if you're finding it hard to explain how do the different types of questions result in different responses? And think about some situations where you might be using open or closed questions. I want you to think about this over the week and think about when people are talking to you, are they asking open or closed questions? Teaching is a particular job where we try our hardest to ask as many open questions as possible because we're trying to encourage you to talk. We're encouraging you to share what you've learned. If you're trying to build a rapport, have a conversation with someone, open questions are obviously the better way to go because it invites the other person to speak. It makes them think that their opinion is valued. It opens up the lines of communication. If you're constantly asking closed questions, the conversation doesn't flow very well. It doesn't move very quickly. So if you were in an interview situation or meeting someone for the first time or trying to put someone at ease, it's a nice way. Making sure you're asking open questions is a nice way of opening up the dialogue. We're going to move on now to thinking about why this is important. 
So we've thought about how we can ensure that there's dialogue and there's conversation between different people. But why? Why do we? Why? Why can't we just live in our own bubble and, and not worry about other people? So we're going to start to look at different people's perspectives. What is the value of diverse views? Each of us only has an incomplete understanding of anything. Even experts in their field or academics spend a lot of time talking to one another to share different perspectives and to debate and try to reconcile different ideas about how the world works. By being open to different perspectives, we are open to expanding our knowledge and understanding of the world, recognizing and benefiting from the skills and experiences of others, appreciating different values and cultural norms, challenging our unconscious biases and assumptions. There is plenty of evidence that groups that work to incorporate diverse perspectives into their thinking make better decisions and get further as a result. This is because the human brain does not tend to worry about the limitations of what it knows. It presumes it knows enough and then keeps going. It takes an active effort to try to open up to different perspectives and to wrestle intellectually with the differences that emerge as a result. So what is a perspective? Is it someone's view of something? A person who works in a team? An idea that solves a problem? Or a way of recording what you've heard? Hopefully you know that the perspective is a different view Which of these is not a value of considering different perspectives? So challenging our unconscious biases and assumptions, expanding our knowledge and understanding of the world, recognizing and benefiting from the skills and experiences of others, or being able to challenge different values and cultural norms. So which one of these is not a positive that comes out of considering different perspectives? So we don't listen to other people just so we can challenge them. We don't want to challenge their values and cultural norms. We want to appreciate those differences. So next task, we're going to apply what we've learned. So for each scenario, you're going to think about how this person's perspective might differ from your own and what you might gain from listening to their speech. So Belinda lives in the United States of America. She's an advocate for prisoners' rights. She has dedicated her career to campaigning to end the death penalty, something we've talked about in many life skills lessons. And she believes that the criminal justice system should be based on rehabilitation. So again, for the second scenario, I want you to think, how might this person's perspective differ from your own and what might you gain by listening to them? Alid was born with cerebral palsy and experiences symptoms such as tremors and muscle weakness. He has used walking frames and wheelchairs since early childhood. Alid is campaigning for better accessibility on public transport. And the third scenario, how might their perspective differ from yours and what might you gain from listening to them? Hamza is a single father to four young children between the ages of one and six. He works full time in a shoe factory. Hamza is campaigning for increases in minimum wage and improved benefits for working single parents. So those three people have got a very different life to you. Their perspective is going to be different. What would they be able to tell you that you don't already know about? How might their experiences change your way of thinking? If you want to do an extension task, what I'd like you to do is to find a video or a podcast of someone talking on a topic. And I would really like you to seek out someone that doesn't agree with you. OK, now this might be quite challenging and it might be quite unpleasant listening, but find someone that's talking about something that, that you wouldn't necessarily agree with. And I want you to just listen to their opinion. OK, and I want you to think, why is their perspective different and is there anything you can learn from them? I would really, really love to hear if you have sort of broaden your horizons and listen to anything, then I'd love to hear about it. If not, I am an avid podcast listener and I can recommend some things that might challenge your ways of thinking. 
So what does it mean to have a different perspective? I want you to be able to tell me. I need you to be able to summarise that. And what is the value of looking at different perspectives? So, for example, when we look at the scenarios, how might someone come up against these people and feel slightly differently? So Hamza in his factory who's working hard and, and wants an increase in minimum wage we totally understand his perspective he's got young children he's on his own he needs to provide for them but how might the factory owner think differently to Hamza and I want you to think about that in, in, in the other two um, scenarios as well so Alid who might have a different opinion to Alid and who might have a difference in opinion to Belinda and again those are both examples we've talked about disability discrimination in class and we've talked about the death penalty in class so they're both examples that you have probably heard different perspectives on and I think it's really important that you think back and think who might not agree with these people and why and then for future application, I want you to think for the rest of this week, when someone's talking and you disagree with them, rather than arguing, shouting over them, I want you to stop and I want you to listen and I want to think, what do I actually disagree with and why do I disagree with it? And I want you to start to try and do that in lessons and in conversations with people in your family and so on. And I want us to try and to take on their perspective. I'm not asking you to agree with them. I'm asking you to listen and try and understand. So something we've been talking about again in school, and we have had many discussions about this in life skills lessons, where do people's perspectives come from? Do they come from their knowledge, experience and skills? Do they come from their interests, their beliefs and values or their assumptions? And I want you to think which one of those could inform someone's perspective. And hopefully you realise that it is all of them. Our perspective comes from all of those. What is an assumption? Is it something that an event that we attend to gain an experience? Is it a view that we have based on a religious practice? It is a thing that we accept as true or certain, but we don't actually have proof of it. Or is it facts, information and skills acquired through experience or education? So if we make an assumption, we're accepting something as true without actually having any proof and we make a lot of assumptions every day and sometimes you know it it feels like it's the right thing to do but we need to think carefully about the assumptions that we make so your task today is to choose one of the topics or you can come up with your own decide what is your perspective where does your perspective come from do you know anyone else who has this perspective on this topic and where does their perspective come from? So, for example, I know I have very different tastes in music to all of you. Where does this perspective come from? It comes from growing up in a different time, in a different era. The things that I listened to when I was younger were very different. The things that I looked up to, the people that I looked up to were very different. The cultural aspects of, of growing up in a different place, in a different time, have an impact. But also, most of the music that I listen to, I came to love because of people who were older than me, like my sister. So people, my experiences, my beliefs and values. I find it very hard to listen to music that doesn't, doesn't adhere to my beliefs and values. And I love listening to the lyrics and actually taking meaning from the lyrics. And my interests... I like to go out and, and dance and, and behave in a certain way and, and the music that I like allows me to do that. It, it has found me friends and it has taken me to places that I, you know, I feel at home in. So my perspective on music, it's not just, oh, I like that, I don't like that. It comes from many different places. So I want you to choose a topic and then think, list all the places that that, that love, that, that interest comes from. And just as a summary, what causes us to have different perspectives? Now, hopefully the written piece of work that you've done or are doing is going to help you with that. Where does your perspective come from? What are the main similarities and differences between two people's perspectives? So when people are come at something with difference of opinion or a different, different set of assumptions, what are the similarities and differences? And then again, think about over the next week, I've asked you to listen to something that you don't necessarily agree with. Maybe try and talk to someone that you don't agree with. Find out where their perspective comes from. 
Okay, so lots for you to do there, lots of practical things for you to do, but also lots of things that you can be doing in your exercise book. And as I said, if you can get your work to us, photograph it, email it, however you would rather do it, if you want to do audio recordings or video recordings, absolutely fantastic. And we will use that because there are certification and AQA unit awards to go along with this work. Thank <music> you.